welcome to the program today. You are in for a treat. I hope you have your coffee. Uh, I do want you to know that a bad cup of coffee is better than no coffee at all. And so I love my coffee. Some of you are tea drinkers or Diet Coke or water. Water is the best. Coffee is good because it is made with water, lots of water. Listen, today's program is phenomenal. Um, I have a very special guest that will encourage you with her life, with her story, with her energy, with her zeal, with her charisma. She is a mom of four. She is um, a single mom, a great part of her life. Uh, she is a boss woman, an incredible entrepreneur. Preneur. She is a champion uh, for women and women's causes and has really dedicated her life to shining spotlights on different women that are doing phenomenal things in life and ministry. She is a great friend, and so it is a joy today to be able to introduce you to her. So stay tuned for that. Listen, I want you to be encouraged this morning. Um, I was meditating on Psalm 103. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know, we have an incredible benefit package from the Father. Many times we do not even uh, receive all of the perks and the blessings that he wants to daily load us up with, forgiving our sins, healing our diseases, setting us free from iniquity. So this morning, today, tonight, wherever you may be, I pray that you get a fresh revelation of all the benefits that Abba has for you and that you receive his peace, you receive his shalom. Now, before we go into this beautiful interview, we're gonna go down the street um, with our friend Stephanie and she's got a burrito bowl, a burrito package and a wonderful recipe that she wants wants to share with us down at the Homekeeper set. So let's go to Stephanie. It's an exciting time, I'll tell you that. John Maxwell said, change is inve inevitable, but growth is optional, okay? So change, we have change. And, and I want to grow and I want to evolve. If you don't grow and evolve, you stay stagnant. So let's just embrace this new season. I'm happy to be here. I hope to give you healthy, frugal, yummy recipes and help you to save money. That's my plan. So today we're doing burrito bowls. I love Chipotle, but I can't afford to eat at Chipotle every night. So what I've come up with is a burrito bowl with turkey soft, uh, turkey and black beans. So we'll just go through it. Let's just go through it. I've taken a pound of ground turkey and I've browned it up. I have a can of black beans that I've warmed up, okay? In the turkey, I'm gonna put two tablespoons of taco seasoning and some salt. Now listen, I'm always gonna go heavy on the seasoning because just because you're trying to eat healthy doesn't mean it has to be bland, right? So we got taco seasoning, we got salt. You could put onions in here. I thought about putting onions in here. The great thing about cooking at home, your rules, your home, your kitchen, your rules. So if you find a recipe that you like, maybe you don't like everything in it, don't put everything in it. Maybe you like to add things to it. That's what I do at home to make it yummy. So we've got ground turkey, taco seasoning, salt. That's done. I have a can of black beans that I've heated up. Here's my favorite part. We have some plain yogurt, and I'm gonna put some hot sauce in it. It calls for two tablespoons, but Arthleen Rippy isn't here anymore, so. <laughs> huh, so there we go. <laughs> she didn't like hot. I love spicy. I love to add all the additional flavors to anything that I'm eating. Because I don't want to eat bland, boring food. And I never thought of doing this, so I'm excited about this part of the recipe. Yogurt and hot sauce. Yummy. Okay, I've got rice that I microwaved, super simple. You can also cook it in a skillet, or if you like to make rice the old fashioned way, do that. If I make this at home, I'm gonna use cauliflower rice because no carbs. Also, if you don't want rice at all, I have some romaine lettuce cut up over here, okay? So I'm gonna put a little bit of rice in the bowl. I'm gonna break that up. 
I'm going to put some turkey sausage. Yum, healthy. I'm gonna put some black beans, so good. Okay, I am going to put some, I have some cherry tomatoes here that are chopped up. Now I have cilantro and I know cilantro is a love hate. You either love it or you hate it. I love cilantro. I'm gonna put some cheese and I'm gonna put some cilantro. Okay, I'm going to put some of the best looking avocado I've ever seen. Susan did so good, she went and shopping and she got me the best, most perfect avocados. And then you would just do this over lettuce if you don't want rice, right? And then I've got some of the yummy yogurt with hot sauce that I'm gonna drizzle over it. Mm, it smells so good. This is gonna be better than Chipotle, I'm telling you. So good. Okay, are we ready for the taste? Here we go. Look how beautiful, it's gorgeous. Let's see here. It is better. It's so good. It's so economical. It's so delicious. I'm so excited. I'm so happy to be back with you all. I missed you all so much. The information is going to come up how you can get this recipe. And I can't wait to come back with more healthy, frugal recipes to share with you. Yummy, we cannot go wrong with burritos. I am a boy mom and so burritos, Mexican, uh, that is a huge hit in my home. You can make a lot of food very economically uh, with Mexican. So great job, Stephanie. So today uh, I'm thrilled um, to have with me a, a beautiful woman of God, a, a powerhouse um, and also a friend and her name is Michelle Robinson. Uh, we've known each other for over two decades and uh, I've had the joy of being in her home. I've had the joy of prophesying over her children and we've traveled together. We've done women's conferences. I got to be a co-author in one of her books and I've just seen her on the front lines. Now, that might sound really glamorous, except I've also been in the trenches with her when she's been in dire pain and going through great difficulty. And really that is what makes her such a champion for women. She's an overcomer. Many of you watching today are going through something and you need to understand the power of being able to overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimonies are what set the captive free when we get the courage to tell them through the power, the strength, the blood and the anointing of Jesus Christ. And so this is a woman that has a multiplicity of kingdom gifts and talents. She really is an apostolic media uh, um, mogul and has really influenced that mountain. But mostly, I think today I want to talk about her newest project, uh, Shine Like a Boss. And it is coming out this month. It is for existing and emerging uh, female leaders that God is really calling to the forefront and to be forerunners in this incredible time in which which we live. So would you help me in welcoming my friend and an incredible woman, Michelle? I oh, love you. I love you too. I'm so happy you came. Oh, it's such a blessing <laughs> to be here and see you shine. Uh, well, <laughs> I you, love it. I you, love it. You hang out with shiny women. <laughs> I do. I have a lot of wonderful women. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. But you know what? You didn't, you didn't always feel shiny. No, I didn't. So, so <laughs> you know that. Talk, talk about... Mm -hmm 
how you got the brilliance of the Lord and just mm -hmm. the radiance because you didn't always, it wasn't always a shiny time in your life. Yeah, no. And you know what? I love when you talked about overcoming because so much about overcoming is what are you overcoming? You're overcoming suffering. Yeah. And suffering really is what, you know, just that journey of suffering and, and how you go through that and how God, how you learn to trust God in that, yeah. how, how you learn to overcome in that, how, how you learn to have victory in that yeah. is really what later helps you soar as a leader. And I have never met a leader who has not experienced suffering, yeah. ever. ever. I mean, literally you hear their story and most of their stories are so, you're just going, how did you even go through that? Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I'm going to share a little bit of my story this morning. Yes. But when I share it, it's so removed from me. It's like I, it's like me looking at another person and going, wow, because God has done so much healing in my life. So I'm going to share, but just know that when I'm sharing, it's out of a place of, of wholeness. Yeah. And that was, that was a long journey. That was not, you know, I didn't shine like a boss just overnight. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was a preparation. And I want to say boss stands for building others, sewing, serving. Oh, I you love know, that. it's not just I'm shining like a boss. Yeah. It's. I'm building others, I'm sowing, and I'm sowing into you, and I'm serving you, and I'm celebrating you. And I really am celebrating you today. <laughs> that is a true Jesus boss. Yes, that, yeah. that is awesome. That's the God boss. I and love so, that. So one of the things, just when I was, you know, as a young girl, I went through a lot of hard, hardship, you know, diff, different types of suffering. I was sexually abused when I was a young, really young, um, by a, a friend of my parents. And, and then later I went through a rape situation and then went through an abortion. And just some of the things a lot of women have gone through but don't talk about. I mean, I'm telling you a lot. When I go and speak at events, I'm telling you, I have so many women who said I've never, I had a leader come up to me from a church and said to me, I have never told one person that wow. I went through an abortion. Wow. And she was, had to be in her thirties. And I just was so, my heart grieved yeah. because truly w when you share with someone else, that's where the healing comes yeah. from. And you have to share it with safe people. But that's right. So I, just as a young person, I went through a lot and then later um, came to know Christ and that was radical. But then there was this journey of hope that God took me through. It started with healing from the abortion and then healing from the rape. But you know what really took the longest and was the most difficult to get free from and really shake was uh, shame. Yeah. Because, uh, and so many people struggle with shame. And that was keeping me from walking in the authority that God's called me to. It was keeping me from walking in the purpose that he's called me to. Wow. And that stayed on me for a long time. I wore a blanket of shame. And I really believed this crazy lie that if I kept that on me, it would keep me humble. Oh, oh such a lie. Such Religion. a lie. Religion. Oh, yeah, such a lie. Yeah. And I left that lie with me for so many years that, you know, I just want to make sure I'm humble. So I'm just going to keep the shame and keep that attached to me and it was it was comfortable and then God really took me through that journey of saying it's time and that was really the last thing I went through uh, overcoming fear I could I, you would never have seen me sitting in this chair I couldn't even <laughs> I couldn't even ask for a prayer request in Sunday school much less sit in a chair and and talk on television no way and I couldn't even see that for myself because my self-worth was so low from all the things in the trauma that I experienced as a young girl um, that I just didn't know I had any value. And so I made a lot of choices out of that. I made choices, bad choices in people. I made, um, you know, I, I didn't really um, think much of myself, so I wasn't lifting myself up in any way, um, in, in the positive ways that we should. And believing the Word of God and what we're, the Word of God says, that, you know, that we are truly a diamond in His eyes. And a diamond goes through a lot to become the shiny object that it is, right? And I went through a lot to become that, uh, that shiny diamond that God showed me. And I have to share with you this um, experience I had that freed me from shame. And it was, it was incredible because I had heard my whole life, my parents are evangelists. Yeah. So I had heard the word of God, knew the word of God. You know, my dad preached and I, I knew scripture. But it wasn't until I was sitting with a mentor. And I did go through three years of very intense counseling to get free. I have no problem saying that because I'm telling you, it makes a difference. I think we went through it all. I think you and I went through age of past, the apostics, <laughs> you know, codependent yeah. no the more. The apostics, that's what yeah. I went Yes, through. I know. We, yes, yeah. exactly. We, 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 we just wanted to be free. I like want to be free. Whatever it takes, I just want to be free. <laughs> you know, and sometimes freedom comes with being intentional. And yeah. a lot of people, you know, you can say you want to be free, 
but you have to take the steps to freedom. And I took those steps. It was not easy to take those steps in his office every time. Yeah. And every time I would think, I'm not going to cry today. I'm feeling really good. And I would end up just sobbing. Yeah. And it was just the continuous healing that yeah. God had to do in my life. And I spent three years in, in just with him um, in counseling and then three years in mentorship. And then actually when he was done, he was like, I'd like you to run my counseling center. <laughs> and I was like, no, I don't, I don't have a desire to do that. But so, but so you go through that road of wholeness and yeah. it's amazing. So I was sitting there in his office one day and he's, you know, he would say to me, Theophostics, right? Yeah. He, what does, what is Jesus saying to you in that moment? I would share something. What is Jesus saying to you right now? And so he's like, let's just take a moment and I want you just to pray and see what God says to you in this moment. Most powerful thing that anybody could yeah. ever do because when Jesus heals you, it goes deep, yeah. you know, and it's transformational. And so here I am sitting there and I'm just praying and I'm like, Lord, just show me, show me what you want me to see. And all of a sudden I just saw this diamond, oh. a brilliant diamond with a waterfall of blood just flowing over it and just pouring over this diamond, but I could see the diamond brilliantly shining through it. And the Lord said, this is how I see you, oh. Michelle. I see you as worthy. Yeah. I see, you. I'm gonna, oh God. <laughs> I see you have value, yeah. you know? And I couldn't see myself that way. And he says to me, because of the blood of Jesus, that's how I'm able to see you. I don't see any of the stuff that you see about yourself. Because we have our own video that plays in our head yeah. and our own remembrance of things that we've done. And we, we live with those things if we're not free. And so yeah. God set me free from shame that day. And I've been able to walk because I couldn't, I was still, and let me just tell you, I was leading, I was on stages, I was already doing things. I was running a women's Christian magazine, but all that was still a part of yeah. me. And God uses, he uses us in those moments, yeah. but he couldn't fully use me to the capacity that he needed to, yeah. to walk in that authority and purpose until I was free from, from shame. Yeah. You know, I love a couple of things you said, and thank you for being so real and, and vulnerable because so many um, people out there are still living under that cloak and that lie of shame. But I love how you said, you know, um, and Bishop Jake says is that, you know, leading while bleeding. Yeah. That, you know, sometimes we disqualify yeah. ourselves and the Lord's like, nope, I, I've called you to lead. The gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. They're without repentance. So keep leading. Yeah. And, uh, and if you'll let me, I'll heal you in front of everybody. Yep. And, 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 mm -hmm. uh, and, and if I can trust you to share about it and, and he, could, he could trust you. And, um, and then I love the freedom and I love how you explained the process of freedom because I think that many times we want to go to an altar or we want to say a prayer and then this culture of fast, fast and microwave and quick, 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 we want to just, God, heal me, abracadabra. And that's <laughs> not it. It, it is yeah. a process. There's layers mm. after layers after layers. And, and thank you for staying in the ring and going through the healing journey and embracing the process because that is very courageous. Mm. And, and, and yet when you get to the other side, if we ever get to the other side, because I think he'll, he'll be healing oh, yeah. us until we get yeah. our glorified bodies. But, but thank you for not quitting because I know you had a million opportunities that you could have. Yeah, never, never, never give up. And, you know, you were a part of some of that journey and you've been there for me. And that's the wonderful thing about women who can celebrate others and lift each other up is that you're able to be there in the, the valleys as well as the mountaintops, you know, and not everybody can do that. Well, you know, life is messy, but even be, being a believer is very messy. Discipleship yeah. is messy. <laughs> yeah. Transformation yes. is messy. And somehow I think we think we get saved, we get born again, we love the Lord, why, are, why is it so messy? We, mm -hmm. we don't want it. And yet, you know, Jesus, his walk on earth and his earth suit was very messy and mm -hmm. very difficult. And you know, this earth isn't our home. No. And um, so we get to look forward to that. Jesus called out the messy people, didn't he? He did, he, did. he, he went them. to them, mm -hmm. he loved them, mm -hmm. he did. Okay, so tell, tell us about this new project. Tell us about your children. Tell us about <laughs> the cool things that are happening right now. Well, you just asked, you just said a I lot know, of things. I know, that was loaded. I know, forgive me. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. Um, I'm really good at capsulizing things. <laughs> so, well, of course my kids, they're all grown now. Yeah. And you prayed and prophesied over my children. And um, it's funny because uh, they were little and there was no real, real obviousness of some of what you prayed, but I knew 
all of it God was going to do. And and my oldest son recently just um, came to the Lord. And he, he, was, he always had a love for God, but he had walked away and pretty much had, was questioning yeah. for about 10 years. And so he was recently baptized. And oh. so, you know, just amazing seeing my children just grow up. And, you know, he said to me, Mom, everything you've taught me is what I'm repeating back to you. I know that. I just didn't listen. And so that's a, that's a wonderful thing. As you know, we both yeah. have... Um, a lot of kids and grandchildren, and you just want to see that legacy poured yeah. out over them. And um, and as far as Shine Like a Boss, it's a different legacy that I'm pouring out <laughs> because the Lord really showed me, okay, now it's always about giving back, right? Yeah. It's about sowing into others. Like I said, building others, sowing and serving. And, you know, in the Bible, it's I, I think it's like um, 494 times where God talks about servants. Yeah. That's a lot of times. It is. And he talks, you don't hear him say, I'm introducing you to the greatest leader. Or, you know, he says, this is my servant who I'm so well pleased with. Yeah. And there's a reason he says that it, because, it, you know, he, he talks about just servant, servant had th so much through yeah. about, you know, you will become more by being a servant. That's right. You know, you become less by not being a servant. Yeah. And so it's really having that heart. And Shine Like a Boss is really about helping women go from being self-made to God-made. Yeah, oh, You know, it. moving from that whole idea, that identity of we need to have success yeah. to we need to be significant. That's right. And we need to pour into other women that significance. And it's really about pouring out our lives and being a life giver. Yeah. Well, you know, Jesus was a suffering servant. You, you know, you talked about suffering mm -hmm. a little while ago and, and that that is how he was prophesied in the Old Testament is that he would come as a suffering mm -hmm. servant, you know, and he, he served unto death, mm -hmm. you know, he, he um, and he's the greatest example that we have. And, you know, a lot of times people ask my husband and I, you know, how is it this and how is it that? And I say, guys, I, 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 God's grace, but I, I can tell you that my responsibility in it is sowing and serving. Mm -hmm. You know, when yeah. he tells me to sow, I sow. When he tells me to serve, I serve. Sometimes I resist, you know, I'm, the, you, we all do, but yeah. he always wins somehow, some You definitely way. want to resist the enemy. Yeah. Because yeah. that happens a lot. Yeah. I know, um, I loved what you said about lead while you bleed. Yeah. Um, that's actually a chapter in my book. <gasps> yeah. Lead no. Well. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, I don't have the book yet. I just know it's coming. Well, and you can put the <laughs> so same chapter in your book because you understand that concept well. Yes. But yeah. you have to, you have to keep going. You yeah. keep pressing through. Yeah. You never stop. You just keep, you, and you know what? Sometimes I was, I was actually saying to someone recently, I mean, do you ever have these moments where you just feel like you're, it's, the enemy is coming so strongly against you in so many different ways and where you just feel like you're going to have this mental breakdown. Yeah. And that's the moment you have to have the mental breakthrough. Yeah. Because if you don't have, and, and you have to fight that, you have to resist the enemy. That's what Jesus said, resist the enemy and he will flee. He'll flee. But it's, so it's a moment of resistance that we have yeah. to have. And as a leader, you're constantly being bombarded with yeah. things, as you know. And especially when you're launching new things and I'm birthing something new I'm, and I'm ready for it. I know it's coming, but it still always is the same thing. I've got to take a moment, resist the enemy yeah. and press through. Yeah. And so really that's where, where, where I'm at. But that journey has been one of, you know, God building different visions. It started with one vision that I had to step out in. Yeah. And I remember um, when I launched Shine Magazine, which you were very familiar with, Christian Women's Magazine. We had 40,000 subscribers, ultimately. I started with 125. Oh. And, but you know what, Jen? When I had 125, I thought it was huge. That's right. I mean, in my mind, I'm like, I have 125 subscribers. <laughs> We're national. Yes. I might have one copy in each bookstore, but we are national. I love it. And I was excited. And that was the biggest, that was the first vision that God had me launch. Yeah. And I remember um, feeling like, I mean, because it cost about, probably about, 30,000 an issue. Yeah. And I didn't have the money. I didn't have the background. I didn't have, I didn't have, I didn't have, I didn't have. Yeah. God had all that. Yeah. And God equipped me and he educated me and he taught me and he rose me up in business that I never thought I would be in. Yeah. And so it's, <laughs> it's been an amazing journey just to watch him train me through trials, through suffering, through um, pressing through, through understanding how to get up when you don't feel like it yeah. and, and fight back and say, I'm going to keep moving forward. Yeah. And it, and that's really what being a boss leader is about. You, you want to be the boss, you better be willing to do anything. Yeah. You better be willing to say yes and show up. And here's the thing. 
I never have had, and this is the truth, I have never had to push my way through anything. God has pulled me forward in it. Yeah. And that's where, that's the difference between being God made and self made. That's right. Self made says, I will lift myself up. I'm going to push my way through. Yeah. I'm going to make, and that's what the world teaches that's us, right. right? That's right. You better be a boss. You better make it. You better have success. You better fight your way to the top. Claw oh. everybody's eyes out, you know. Oh my gosh, girl. And you know that's so exhausting. Yeah. So exhausting. Yeah. Well, you did it God's way, you know, <laughs> you know, the Frank Sinatra song, I did it my way, you did it God's way, <laughs> there you, go. you know, I you like did that. it, I you, did it God's yeah, way, you I'll did it, <laughs> do it, well, you can sing too, some people get all the gifts, you got, you have a cookbook, oh. you, 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 you're amazing, but, oh. um, we've got to close, which I hate, because you have so much to say, um, I love how you've shared you know, and I know that there's women that need to hear, you know, do not despise small beginnings. Amen. Be faithful in the little and God will make you ruler over much. And I love how you just said yes. And you know, God never, he, if you had all those things, he couldn't get any glory, but you had to trust him in every single area and every single genre and he came through and then it becomes where he shines and, and he can get all the glory. So. Before we close, I feel like there are uh, women watching that are struggling with shame. I feel like there's people watching that know God's given them a vision, but they don't know how to make it happen. I feel like there's people watching that were celebrating um, your son coming back. But we have one minute and I just want you to pray and release faith and encourage those that are leaning in right now and listening to this story and saying, God, touch me. Absolutely. Lord, I just thank you, Father, for the honor to just be able to be here with Jen and celebrate her. And Lord, I just thank you for every single person right now who is watching this. Lord, that you would just go into their living room, wherever they're at, at the office, in the living room, wherever they are, in their car. Lord, and just put your arms around yes. them. And Lord, that blanket of shame, I, I just pray right now in the name yes. of Jesus that that blanket of shame, that blanket of, of suffering, Whatever it is that they are carrying, Lord, that you would remove that blanket from them and put your blanket, your blanket that you give, that you pour over us, that covers us in our, in our shame, that covers us in our suffering. Lord, that hope, that peace, that love that you bring. And so, Father, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you are setting people free right now as I speak. As we sit here right now, you are setting our sisters and brothers free from whatever it is that is keeping them in that bondage. And Lord, that they would move from their potential yes. into your glorified yes. purpose for their life. So not for them to be raised up, but Lord, but for you to be glorified and for you to shine, for you to shine, Lord. Yeah. And we just thank you in Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. We'll see you next time.